Sea level rise has gone on in Maryland for a very long time. We have a lot of islands that have disappeared. We've lost 13 islands uh, that were once mapped on, on nautical charts that, that have sort of disappeared beneath the surface. So we're low lying, so any sea level rise is a big deal. If you push a big storm, you get much worse inundation. The uniqueness of the bay is that it can, it can trap the water in, allowing big surges when the hurricanes go to the west of the bay. With Hurricane Isabel in 2003, half this county was underwater. You can get higher than you expected surges in the bay. It did really big flooding. It flooded a lot of portions on the western shore in Baltimore, too. We have a rising sea level in Maryland about twice the global average. So we got lots of things uh, conspiring to make it bad for us. There's a 30% more sea level rise for the whole area off of the uh, nor northeast United States. What happens if all the ice melts? Isn't there a limit to how much rise there can be? What's climate change going to do to frequency of extreme events, precipitation, river runoff? We have to think about how to, how to base our decisions in the future on something that's, you know, scientifically valid but also usable. The governor asked us to uh, bring scientists together to actually uh, reassess uh, what we know about sea level rise. We wanted to make sure that the state was using the most up-to-date um, science on climate change and sea level rise. There's a large body of science that's been produced. We had the luxury of really engaging some top experts and really focusing on sea level rise. In addition, of course, we have to then estimate the rate at which our land is sinking. All around the world, in all the oceans, in all the estuaries, and in the Chesapeake Bay, sea levels are rising. But along the shores of Virginia and Maryland, and much of the Mid-Atlantic, something else is happening. We have a, one more thing going on here, and that is that we're south of where the last toe of the glacier occurred, of the ice sheet during last ice age. South of that ice sheet, the crust was pushed up. When you melt the ice, it rebounds and the, and the, and the, and the high point where we are subsides. All these lands are sinking, settling back down to pre-glacial levels. All the wide, low-lying marshlands are sinking and so are the long winding riverlands of the eastern shore and farmlands and townlands. Well, we're trying to figure out what would contribute to sea level rise so that we can then make projections about how those things might change into the future. Up, up it's to a 30% more than the average. Turns out to be not as simple as it might, you might think. At a global scale, there's basically two factors that are most important. So one is thermal expansion. So as the ocean warms up, it absorbs heat, um, which means its volume expands. Uh, the other is melting of land ice. So if you take water that's currently in an ice sheet or a mountain glacier, and you dump it into the ocean, the volume of the ocean will also rise. Then when you melt land ice, um, that doesn't actually cause sea level to rise the same everywhere. So when you melt, say, Greenland, then you actually get a sea level fall in Scotland. Um, and then you get more sea level rise sort of on the opposite side of the planet. For Maryland and Virginia and the Mid-Atlantic, the opposite side of the planet is not Greenland but Antarctica, the frozen continent at the bottom of the world. 
that's actually a really big mass of ice. Um, and so that is currently reshaping Earth's gravitational field, essentially pulling water towards it. So that means for Maryland, if it melts, water is going to flow away from the ice sheet. As water flows away from land at the bottom of the world, sea levels are rising far away along the coastlines of the mid-Atlantic. The other aspect is we're close to the Gulf Stream. And as with a lot of these findings about sea level rise, we're a little surprised and a little embarrassed. The Gulf Stream is this huge volume of water that comes out from south around Florida and up along the North Carolina coast. Picture this as a large river. That water passing close to Cape Hatteras is going to want to veer to the right as the earth turns. So as the water veers to the right, it's pulling water off of the continental shelf, so lowering the water levels along our coast. There's a big slope across the Gulf Stream associated with the rotation of the Earth. It's about three feet, maybe more. That doesn't seem like much, but three feet is huge in sea level rise. When this Gulf Stream starts to slow down, that big slope starts to flatten out. It no longer pulls a lot of water off the coast. Sea levels along the coast start to rise. This is consistent with what you found. You know, you would expect that, that if the velocity declined of the Gulf Stream and it resulted in an increase on one side, it, it resulted in a decrease on the other. There's this circulation slowdown outside of, you know, off our coast that could in fact increase the amount of the volume of water that's kind of bottled up there temporarily, kind of backs up like a traffic jam. We should have known the Gulf Stream is important around here. Isabel, Ivan, Irene, Lee, Sandy. As the sea level rises, the volume of the Chesapeake Bay actually increases. So therefore, the storm surge propagating up, moving up the bay, uh, has less friction. So that storm surge could actually be sharper and higher uh, as a result of the changing uh, geometry dimensions of the bay. The geometry of the bay forms a funnel. A funnel that aims storm surge straight at Baltimore, Annapolis, Washington, D.C. That also happens in the, in the major tributaries. So if you look at the storm yeah. surge level at Washington, it was actually higher than at the mouth of the Potomac. Yeah, that's so, correct. Yeah. Isabel seemed to propagate up at this, about the speed of the, of the long wave. If it happens to hit it right, which it could, you can blow Baltimore away. So all of those things, uh, the warming of the ocean, expansion of volume, uh, ice melting, where it melts, changes in ocean currents, the rate at which our land is sinking. So you add all those together and you would come out with a relative uh, sea level rise rate estimate. For 2050, scientists now estimate sea levels may rise 2.1 feet from Maryland. For 2100, sea levels may rise by more than five feet in Maryland. In Baltimore, high tide plus four feet of sea level rise could flood the inner harbor. A storm surge could flood downtown. And much of the eastern shore could look like this. There's something happening. There's no disputing that. And it's happening much more readily and, and, and rapidly. And we have to make wise decisions to better prepare our coastal communities and our, and our state.